Assalamualaikum and good morning to everyone. Thank you for joining us today in webinar on planning and conducting research at British Antarctic Survey bus research station through YPSM bus support. For your information, YPSM is introducing bus support to Antarctica to encourage mission researchers to conduct their research activities in Sydney or Rotorua Station in Antarctica. Uh, this is made available through an MOU signed between WebSM and British Antarctic Survey. The first MOU was established in 2014 until 2019, and then it was renewed for 2019 to 2024. Last week, WebSM has just renewed, renewed the latest MOU for the duration of another five years from 2024 to 2029. But unfortunately, under the newly signed MOU, only Sydney Station will be available. So our first speaker today, Dr. Wan Dutfi Wan Johari, Senior Lecturer from Faculty of Forestry and Environment, University Putra, Malaysia. Dr. Luffy was in Rotira Station for three weeks from 15 February to 11 March 2022. He received the WPSM birth support to Antarctica in 2021. Following Dr. Wan Lutfi, we will have another speaker, Dr. Noalia Johari, a senior lecturer from Institute for Research, Development and Innovation, IRD, IMU University. She went to the Sydney Research Station for duration of 14 weeks from 20 November 2019 until 28 February 2020 and returned to Malaysia just right before the country lockdown. She received for PSM support um, to Antarctica in 2019. Without further ado, let us begin this webinar um, and embark on a journey on Antarctic expedition with Dr. Wan Lutfi, and then we will continue with Dr. Alia. Uh, we will have the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Dr. Lutfi, thank you. All right, uh, assalamualaikum and very good morning to all. Um, so I will um, explain uh, on my journey on, uh, to Antarctica, uh, the planning and conducting research. So uh, at British Antarctic Survey Research Station. Um, okay. Right. Okay, so... Um, basically, if you need to know about uh, bus support, you can always go to YPASM, uh website and uh, there's a list of uh, everything listed there. And uh, there's also flowchart that you can follow. Nonetheless, there are things that maybe from my experience, I will add on that. So uh, during my time, uh, YAPASM contributes, uh, I think, 27, 27,500 pound, uh, 27,500 pound uh, to bus. Uh, so right now in the website, it says 32,000. So they already increased. I'm not sure about the recent one. Uh, maybe they increased as well. Um, so the, the, the grant here, the support here, it's only uh for the researcher to go to the uh point uh whether it's Falkland Island or Punta Arenas to Antarctica okay and all everything that uh in the Antarctic station so basically whatever happened before or after uh the Antarctic journey you have to find another grant so this grant is only for uh, whatever uh, you want to do in that research station. So uh, for example, the, the, uh, the, the food, uh, the, the research station itself, um, uh, uh, the lodging and so on, okay? So what, you need to prepare here is uh, expenses for the flights. Uh, in this case, Malaysia, UK to Falkland Island. Okay. 
uh, in my case, it's to Falkland Island, so not Puntas Arenas. Uh, and also shipping equipment, devices, or samples to UK. So in this case, you need to send your sample. For example, you want to go in January. Uh, you need to send your sample in September in the previous year. So uh, on, on, on September, you need to send your sample already to UK so that they can ship to Antarctica uh, and your sample or your uh, device or your equipment will arrive in Antarctica in January. Okay, so in this case, you also need to um, pay for the freight pay for the uh, to UK for example and whatever that they will put in the in the ship okay I mean will be provided uh, by bus okay so uh, the polar clothing as well okay uh, provided by bus but you need to pay for the rental okay of the polar uh clothing uh and also before you go there are many many vaccines that you need to uh take okay so um there are you know things that uh whether you have these vaccines or not okay so you have to follow the list and you have to pay for that um and also for the medical checkup okay other expenses like you know uh, if you want to bring your own clothing, your own food, and so on. So you need to um, have that. And uh, trainings, okay? If, in you, if you need to go training in UK, then you need to pay for the flight ticket to UK and then uh, have training there for one or two weeks and then come back to Malaysia and then go back again uh, to UK for... Uh, journey to Antarctica. In my case, uh, because I went there in 2022, so it's still under COVID, so I can take training, I can do training uh, uh, in Malaysia, so it saved me a lot of money. And nonetheless, the training still costs um, um, a thousand something ringgit, okay, uh, for uh, to get the license on the ship. Okay, you want if you, if you need to go uh, on the ship. Okay, um, okay, other things that you need to prepare is uh visa application to Falkland Island. Um, even though Falkland Island is under UK, but the the uh, management uh of or the government is kind of like separate from UK. Uh, if you go to UK, you don't need the visa, but if you want to go to Falkland Island, you need a visa. I almost forget about the visa because I went to the website, uh, Falkland Island website, and Falkland Island website didn't list Malaysia as one of the uh, country that required visa. So I thought that, okay, uh, Malaysia doesn't need to uh, have visa to go to Falkland Island. So I kind of like don't look at other resources. And then when I got the email from BAS, the email actually says that Malaysia has to apply for visa to Falkland Island. So I did that just enough before uh, Christmas. Uh, <laughs> uh because uk when they have christmas uh and a new year they kind of like took a very long holiday so barely okay i call all the people like in in uk uh the uk of course i want to apply for uh, i asked because i thought Portland island is under uk uh uh you a visa for uk so I called the UK uh, visa, but it's really, really hard to get someone and you have to pay for 
uh, each minute that you talk to the person. Um, so I uh, go ahead and call Falkland Island instead. So when I call Falkland Island, uh, the the they are very very friendly and they say oh you don't need to have that we we're sorry because we didn't put Malaysia in the website blah 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 so it's okay you can come <laughs> so it's kind of a relief nonetheless when I uh went for uh, to uh Portland Island and when I arrived there they don't even check they they saw that. You come with all the bus people, British Antarctic uh, survey people. So they just uh, stamp your uh, passport and uh, your document and that's it. I mean, they don't really check one by one. Why don't, don't you get visa and so on? Uh, 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 pretty much, much friendlier uh, 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 way in the, in the uh, Falkland Island uh, compared to in, in the UK. Okay. Um, you also need to do some training. Uh, and this is the training for you to go. Uh, to be on the ship. Okay, you be one of the crew member of the ship. Even though you will probably will take. Uh, in my case, I don't take the ship, but I go through. Uh, by, uh, flight. Uh, to Rothra. Nonetheless, uh, they require you to have the license, okay, uh, for the ship. Okay, I don't remember, like C first, okay. So, like you have your own ID, and this is uh require um, uh, valid until for five years or something like that, okay. So, um, like a driver license, meaning that you can be a cruise ship member. Okay, you can apply the job on the ship after you got this. <laughs> so, uh, you need to take that. And in Malaysia, uh, it costs around 1000 something. And also the first aid. Uh, so, if you are required to go to the UK instead, so you will get the, uh, uh, you will do this both together and maybe some other training. Okay. Uh, what I did was during my time, okay, the shipping crew, uh, training was separate, and I also have another, uh, British, uh, Antarctic survey training online, so, uh, uh, so they will explain the 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 thing in the Rothra station or any other station. Um, vaccines, as I mentioned earlier. Um, vaccines, there are many vaccines that you have to take. Uh, and during my time, I have to complete all the COVID uh, vaccines, uh, have to have the certificate and so on. So I have to print out and have all the things signed by the doctors. Um, uh, medical checkup for, uh, in order to go to, to the training for the shipping crew, you have to have medical checkup for shipping crew license and also medical checkup for the bus uh, so there are two medical checkups and also the dental checkup as well uh, so these are the things that uh, i think uh, a lot of things that you need to do months before you you go to the um, uh, rothra station uh, I went Rothra station in 2022. So all of these things I did in 2021. Okay, starting from after you you already got uh, 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 confirmation that you got um, birth uh, support grant. Okay, so basically all of these things I did, or, you know, X-ray, medical checkup, training, uh, vaccines, uh, and so on. Um, and also, <laughs> I put that dinner. Um, this is also crucial if you have family. So, uh, let's say you want to tell your spouse that you're going to Antarctica. Of course, you need a, uh, <laughs> you know, 
are not for them not to be shocked that you know you're going somewhere really far away so you need to tell them slowly okay or it depends okay some people uh they have their own way of telling their spouse and their their kids or whatnot okay uh because at that time uh my uh i just got my uh, uh my baby okay in 2020 so maybe it's like uh too much for my uh my wife to handle you know things by herself you know with other kids as well so i need to uh get to prepare to tell her that you know i'm going somewhere for months um, so uh uh and it's during covid as well i mean uh it's not easy for other um uh family members uh, to to go and visit my uh my my wife and my kids and so on during that time um and also you need to have another grant uh, as i mentioned earlier birth support is only for the grant to go uh to, to go to uk it, sorry to go to uh rothra and and with all the expenses inside the inside the station uh, okay like you're going to uh, go on the boat ride you're going to do uh, whatever sampling whatever so all those things are being paid uh, through yapazam but for the other grant application where you need to buy your flight ticket where you need to uh, do the uh, sending your samples or you need to do the experiment with your samples then you need another grant so it depends on your university maybe your university has your own matching grant so uh, in UPM for example we have our matching grant um, in order for uh, uh, we will tell that we got the birth support at that time and we will match that birth support uh, with the um, similar or uh, less amount uh, that you get for the birth support. Um, so for example, you got 32 pounds, uh, 32,000 pounds, so you can match your uh, grant application with that. And this is also required because when you want to fill out the form for BAS application, you need to have a grant uh mention or any other financial support that you have so they will ask you do you have this what title of your your grant and so on so how many how uh how much that you get for your grant and so on yeah so you actually have to have uh another grant it's kind of like catch 22 uh situation where uh, in order to apply for birth support, you need another grant. And in order to have this grant, you need another grant. Uh, you need uh, birth support. So uh, what I did was I put uh, my... Uh, I have another grant, uh, uh, not, not specifically me, but my other co-researcher uh, 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 has another grant on Antarctica. So I just put uh, her uh, grant in that. It's kind of like, you know, because we're uh, once you have the birth support, it's easier. It's um, I'm, it's not easier, but, you know, you will get a greater chance to get the matching grant in my university. So, uh, uh, so in order to get the birth support, you need another grant, okay? But make sure that you are in the grant, not like, you know, you put any somebody's, somebody else's grant and and hopefully that uh, that grant, uh, you get the birth support and so on. No, I mean, uh, so basically maybe uh, you have your own internal grant uh, with uh, your own university, then you put that as in, in, in your uh, uh, BAS application. Okay, so... Basically, you you need to have another grant in order to to apply because they they want to know whether how you are going to go to UK how you are going to go to they are very 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 strict on this or maybe uh in for some some cases they they have uh written okay 
support from the university, for example, travel grant and so on. So you may also include that as well. Okay. Um, so this is uh, what you can find in Yapazam website. So if you don't get this uh, in my, in my uh, talk, you can go to Yapazam website birth support and you can download this PDF. So all you need first thing first is to discuss your project idea with BAS. And this is kind of like a very important step, the first important step. So how are you going to get uh, contact bus you need to email the director or if you already know someone in bus you can directly contact them but if you don't know anyone you need to contact the director of bus um, and she or he will uh, 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 put your name or you know refer forward your name to any other researchers in bus that will guide you through that. So depending on your research project, so you need to contact the idea uh, with bus and you need to do it right now if you want to apply for uh, next year or something like that. I mean, like already have some contact with them um, uh, through email, um, uh, have your... Uh, idea of research that you want to do in Antarctica. So they will say, okay, so I'll I'll pass your uh your uh, uh research ideas to uh this person and please contact them. So you need to contact them and they will agree or not agree. And this is important in order to submit for your OSPQ here. Okay, and in this OSPQ, I'm not sure about the grant application that I mentioned previously, whether it's in the pre-award or after that. Uh, nonetheless, as I mentioned, you need to have one in order to apply this. Um, so um, you need to fill, they will send you the link. Um, during my time, uh, they send me through the Microsoft link a microsoft team link or something like that so you have to um log in and fill all the form online okay um these are the the uh, things that you need to do over here it has the uh november 2023 but of course i urge you to to uh do it right now i mean uh 2000 uh, November 2024, okay? So you need to, right now is August, okay? So you need to already have people in mind, have your own uh, research uh, ideas and so on. So you apply this for, uh, uh, of course, uh, the date is, it's uh, here it's mentioned as 22nd December, but maybe it will be earlier depending on because you know this is close to christmas and so on um so they will uh you need to send and they uh review and they will uh approve or reject so you need to wait uh for that okay and um of course uh you need to go and submit your project proposal as mentioned by uh uh, Mrs. Intan just now in the beginning that uh, for these five years, there's no longer in Rothra, so in Sydney. And Dr. Alia later will talk about research in Sydney. I think it's wonderful. I saw her pictures, a lot of things that you can uh, do in Sydney as well. So, um, and uh, all of these, you need to send your a project proposal. It doesn't have to be a very long Malaysian style uh, project proposal. It's like very short, uh, one page, uh, something like that. So it's not like very detailed. They don't give you any, any format for you to send your project proposal. So um, sometimes people got stuck because they don't have any format. So what are they going to write about? Um, so 
basically maybe you can get uh, the ideas from Malaysian style of the project proposal, uh, maybe a little bit on uh, like uh, extended abstract of your proposal. Um, so, uh, uh, and then you need, once you have uh, approval and uh, you need to submit the post award uh, OSPQ here. Okay, uh, all the things that you've done. Okay, they, they, they will. Uh, uh, I think this is more on the after. Okay, this is once you got, you need to fill another form, uh, online, and then after that, after you come back to Malaysia, you will need also to fill another form. Okay, so I'm not sure post award whether it's after once you have the award or after you come back to Malaysia. Okay. Uh, okay, that one is maybe after you got the, the and then you have to have uh, 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 if you want to send shipping and so on. Okay. Uh, uh, you need to send your, your stuff to Rothra or Sydney. Uh, depending on uh, uh, the size of your your stuff, okay? Uh, you need to bring your own uh, uh, tubes, your own uh, pipettes, your own pipette tips, um, your own... Uh, some people, they bring their own sequencing device, okay? Uh, nowadays, you can get a very small uh, sequencing device uh, if you're doing genetics or PCR machine, if you doing PCR or anything like that, if you think that you have enough time to do that. Um, uh, for my part, uh, I, I don't think I have enough time because all my uh, time in Rotra spent on collecting samples um, and do some uh, very short and easy uh, DNA, RNA extraction. Um, but to do PCR and so on, maybe you did another uh, month, okay, since I'm uh, going there for three, I went there for three weeks, so it's not enough time for me to do uh, uh, that. Okay, um, and, and um, all of this thing, you need to make sure that you need to send all your equipment uh, before certain times. In my time, it was before September. But uh, of course, you need to buy those things first, okay? Buy the the uh, tubes that you want to bring in uh, um, uh, and so on. So they probably in, in, the, in the lab, they have some that you can use, but maybe it's not enough for your own research project, okay? Uh, so... Maybe for like uh, alcohol for cleaning up in Rothra, okay, in Rothra. But in Sydney, I'm not sure. Maybe they don't have that. But in Rothra, they have all the uh, lab, uh, basic lab stuff like uh, gloves or or things like that uh, that you can just use. But for other station, maybe I'm not sure about that. So, uh, and then you need to do the training. Okay, if you need to go to UK, if you are required to go to the UK to do the training, then you need to spend some money for the flight ticket and for the for the length of the stay uh, in, in the UK. Okay, and then you can go to the uh, South next year. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, so I will talk about my journey to Rothra Island. Uh, uh, sorry, so Rothra Station. So uh, basically, uh, I went uh, to UK, okay, and uh, went to UK and stayed there for uh, two, three days, okay, Um because you need to have the, at that time, you need to have the COVID test and so on. So you need to, to go there and take the COVID test before and after in the UK. So it costs 
uh, a lot of money as well because for them like uh, that that test is like one hundred pound something like that. So in our money is like seven hundred something. So you need to uh get that uh done and um you reach Heathrow, but in order to go to Falkland Island, you need to take a uh, British Royal uh Air Force, which is in Oxford. Okay, so you need to travel from uh, London if you want to stay in London and go to Oxford. Uh, sorry, Cambridge. Is it Cambridge? Uh, maybe Cambridge. Sorry, Oxford. Oxford. Oxford University. Okay, maybe I I some some other city, uh, uh toward the north of London. Uh, like one one hour ride. Uh, and you take the British Royal. Air Force over there, so specifically for military personnel and people who work with, uh, with the government. So it's not uh, uh, uh the usual um, uh, airport. Therefore, when you go there, uh, and one of the requirement in order to take the flight. Our Royal Air Force is to take off. Uh, you don't. You cannot wear any headgear. So for the ladies, maybe uh, for the Muslim lady, you cannot uh, wear your tudong, uh, to go to to take the flight. Okay, so you have to remove your your headgear. Uh, I'm not sure what's the purpose, but uh, maybe for the military or whatever thing. Uh, purpose there. So you cannot. Uh, wear any sort of headgear, hat, cap, or anything like that. And from uh UK, you will go to uh they will stop at uh Senegal, uh and uh and from Senegal they will go to Falkland Island. In Falkland Island, uh since um Falkland Island uh, at that time, there's a requirement to to quarantine for two weeks, okay? Quarantine for two weeks before I go to the Rothra. But right now, maybe you can go straight away. There's no more uh, COVID. Um, and and from Falkland Island, you have to stay in, uh, in the hotel for two weeks, okay? Maybe for some people, they get depression because you cannot go outside at all. I mean, you can go outside and, and do exercise, but not inside the hotel. And then you will take, in my case, since it's two weeks waste in, in Falkland Island, then I need to take a flight to Rothra. So only Rothra has uh, 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 in Adelaide, Adelaide Island over here. So only Rothra has the, the um, uh, for, for the for the flight to take off, okay? Touchdown. So here is the hotel that I stay in uh, Rothra, uh, in, in Falkland Island. So Falkland Island, and eh, it's kind of like boring, okay, and watch TV and have meal, send it to you. And you have to take three COVID tests, <laughs> okay, in, before you can uh, approve to go. So if you if you already there and then you have to... Uh, let's say you fail your COVID test, then you have to stay more before you can go to Antarctica. Okay, so here is in Falkland Island. Okay, this is what things that you can see in the Falkland Island at during the quarantine. So I cannot go beyond uh this area of hotel. Okay, and this is the uh. Uh, Rothra station, uh, occupied since 1975, operates all year. So in summer, it's really a lot of people, 120 staff. Uh, in winter, it's 2021. 20, so uh, many researches that uh, that you can do over there, biosciences, geosciences, glaciology, uh, microbiology, and so on. Okay, so here is the railway 
you can go uh, exercise in this area, play games, uh, play soccer or anything like that. And also they use this uh, uh, flight to go to other station. Okay, I'm not sure maybe uh, if you go by ship, uh, some people can, can go by ship uh, right away to those station. Um, these are the pictures that I've taken, okay? And this is the Rothra station from the other side. So uh, I took the picture from here, okay? Uh, overlooking the, the, the railway. So you can see the Rothra station over here, okay? Uh, and during my stay over there, we have a lot of construction. Uh, so 120 staff over there working for construction, maybe like 60 uh, uh, or more people working on the construction and the rest is admin. Uh, researchers is less than 10, okay? Maybe like uh, five or six people that work, okay? And this is uh, outside the lab. <laughs> And you can basically see a lot of seals, uh, whether it's Weddell seals or um, elephant seals. And, you know, you can uh, take soil sample. Okay, I thought that there are a lot of soil in, in, in Rothra, but basically there is a like, very, very small amount of soil. So it's really hard. You have to dig through. I thought it was like more... You can dig a lot, but no, you know, it's really hard to find soil actually in in Rothra. So um the 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 area is basically a lot of rocks and so on. So um and you can get uh these are the uh the clothing that were given to you as well, okay, with uh with the hat, okay, with the boots, with the sunglasses with all of these are provided. So um uh here it's overlooking from the 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 uh, um canteen or the uh food place okay and there is also multi faith room that you can pray uh small a very small one but basically I saw that uh, uh, only like uh, Muslim prayer racks and and uh, racks and and uh, that's it. I mean, basically most of the time the one that will be using this uh, is Muslim people. Um, so so you can also pray in in the room, but it's not enough space. Okay, so basically if you go over there, there you can have much space to pray. Um, and you also, uh, there are, uh, tag that will be given to you, uh, uh, that you need to, to have, uh, for example, telling where you've been, okay, where, where you are right now, whether you are in, in the lab, whether you are outside, okay, all of these things are being recorded. You need to record wherever that you go so that you won't be uh missing okay so there are also curfew uh i mean not curfew but like uh you have to be in the in the room after a certain time so that you know you don't stray away going outside and so on uh and also there's a time where you need to involve in the kitchen okay so rothra has the uh its own kitchen and their own cook so you in the beginning when you arrive there you will ask to uh tell the cook you know what type of food that you want to uh have uh, you can eat you know whether you you are vegan you're halal you're kosher you are um so you just tell them so they will prepare for for you okay like vegan vegetarian uh no alcohol and so on okay and they will cook for you. So it depends. Uh, in Sydney, probably probably you have to cook your own self. So this is the 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 bed that I have. So I have a lot of uh things I'm bringing. So this is the the uh, the bag. Uh, you have the clothing, the the 
uh, boots and so on. And this is the view, okay, uh, in front of your room, uh, in the lab, okay. And and also remember the railway, okay. You can also uh take the bike and do biking over there and so on. There are a lot of food, okay, prepared, okay, very, very awesome food. I thought I was going to be skinny over there, but <laughs> you know, the food are amazing. They have their own theme. For example, today is Italian, next it's it's Chinese, and then after that, Indian. So there are many, many food, a vegetarian and so on, okay? So you don't have to worry about food over there, okay? The, a lot of desserts and so on. Um, There are a lot of flora and fauna over there. Uh, you have the weather seals, um, uh, elephant seal, uh, and fur seal. Uh, this is much more, a little bit dangerous. It's kind of like, uh, um, if if they can, if you see that all of these are rocks, so you think that they are very slow. No, they are very very fast. So in order to to uh to scare them, you need to you know stand tall and then clap and you know uh make sound so they will go away. But they will actually can they can attack you. Elephant seal is like an old people, so they kind of like sleep all day. Okay, some people say they will fart all the time. So, uh, but for seal is like teenagers. Okay, they're like you know attacking people, uh, like a youth. So this is kind of like video for you to see. Like they oh, try to go, <laughs> go and try to jump into the ice. Okay. Oh. And there are elderly penguins. Uh, elderly penguins is not that uh tall. It's like uh around your knee height, your knee. So it's not that uh, uh tall. Uh, compared to emperor, emperor is much taller. Um, so in Rotra you will see only pretty much ninety nine percent elderly. Okay, it's really hard to find other other uh, type of penguins. Okay, maybe you can find chin strap and so on. So here are some, uh, the this is when I try to collect some sample over here, soil sample, and suddenly these two penguins walking around. Okay, so you can see how beautiful it is. Okay, I urge uh, people to apply for <laughs> this grant okay go to antarctica it's very very nice very very beautiful um you can do a lot of things over here okay so it's very beautiful and very nice you can collect samples all day you know uh and, and very nice so you can see over here there are very little amount of soil and you can see uh moss or lichens a, a, a little bit but mostly are rocks okay so make sure that you you uh, you know what to do over there and also uh, during the sampling you will be attacked by the squaw birds okay so so they can you know flap their 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 wings and their uh, legs to your face and so on. So that's why we put a flag over here so that instead of attacking your head, they will attack the the one on the top over here. Okay, so be careful. But sometimes they don't care. They say they know already that you are trying to deceive them. So <laughs> they will attack your head anyway. Okay, so be careful when you take the sample around the place where they have their chicks. So uh, these are the chicks. So you can see that the chicks are much, you know, like the size of a chicken already. So the, the bird is really big. And this guy over here uh, is the one that worked with squaw bird. 
So he actually have the permit to to hold the birds and so on. Okay. Uh, I don't have, so I cannot. Uh, it, I mean, well, they have the rules. Uh, you cannot take. Uh, you cannot be near the the animals like five meters. Uh, so so sometimes you can take pictures, but uh, if you want to be closer, but nonetheless, uh, try to to um uh, break the rule. Okay, um. So in order to collect this, you have to have permit. Um, there are many studies that can be done. For example, you want to uh, study the, the poop of the penguins or the poop of the, the squaw bird and so on. So you can do that as well. And there are many, many greens as well. Um, Moses. Uh, lichens and flowering plants. Flowering plants here, there are only two types of flowering plants, which is only grass. So the grass here, uh, uh, and you can see here, these are the grass, the flowering plant. But uh, the rest are moss and lichens. Okay. Nowadays, with the increase of the climate change and so on, there are many places where you can see more greens over there okay um so so maybe some people biology who wants to work with plants or flower you can also work with this antarctic grass uh i think it's it, it will be an interesting topics uh and this is in leone island so um there are people who working with lichens and uh, moss they went to other islands and they couldn't find as much as these so when they went to this island and saw this they said like oh amazing there are so many things that you can do over here and uh and 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 I'll almost done here okay so, so the signs over here there are many islands, so the Rothra and the Anchorage, the Leone Island over here, and this is uh, Lagoon Island. So you need to take a boat ride to these islands. And uh, Lagoon, okay, so there are places that you can stay overnight over there uh, that you have to uh, uh, go. And this is the fossils of seals. Okay, fossils. This might be hundred or more years old. Okay, Leone is this island. Okay, this is inside the the hut that you see over there, and you can also do research in the bus, uh, ship. Okay, and this is in the lab, in the uh, Rothra lab. If you're planning to learn, uh, to study starfish or sea urchin and so on okay in the lab okay there are so many things there are bottles over here you don't need to bring that centrifuge uh and so on and this is another malaysian okay working over there from netherlands okay she work she comes from netherlands but through uh, uh she comes through netherlands and when you want to ship back uh your items to malaysia it will take uh from Rothra to UK maybe six months uh or, or less to go shipping. And then from UK to Malaysia, you need to apply permit for uh from Marquis. Uh and also the courier, I use World Courier and it cost me a lot, okay, thousands. Okay, and uh other things that you need to apply. Okay, so terima kasih to Yapazam. Okay, UPM, British Antarctic Survey, and people who work with me, uh, Prof. Yunus, uh, Dr. Adila, and Dr. Uh, Aisha, and Franz at Rotra and family. Sorry, I'll take a lot of time explaining here. Um, maybe later with Dr. Alia, we'll explain more on the process as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lutfi. Um, let me invite Dr. Alia Johari. To share her slide. Sure. Just give me a moment. Just 
switch that as well. Yeah, so is this, can you see this now? Yes. Okay. Hi, so uh, thank you very much, uh, Intan, for the introduction. And uh, I think Dr. Lutfi has shared quite a uh, different experience from mine. So I was there earlier, uh, just before COVID. And I also took a different route down to Sydney and um, to through commercial flights. So I'll share a bit more on that. So what we, I'm going to share is how I planned and conducted research on Sydney Island with, uh, with Bass. Uh, I'm from the Institute for Research Development and Innovation from IMU. And I was there just before COVID started. So as an introduction, the project I was um, conducting involved collection of soil samples under um, any form of vegetation. So we call it the rhizosphere soil. <laughs> it's where you have the... Um, the roots, and there's abundant um, bacteria available there, excuse me, <laughs> abundant bacteria there um, for us to study, essentially. So we were doing a molecular evaluation of the rhizosphere prokaryotic communities, and this involved me going down um, with the uh, with our collaborators as well involved in the planning. So from BAS, it was Prof. Pete Convey from um, Karani Monash is uh, Dr. Chong Chun Bi, and they would have a lot of experience heading south. So that was very useful for the planning purposes. So why did I choose Sydney Island? So this is what uh, Sydney Research Station looks like just across the cove. Um, I This is what the photo that I took uh, while one, on one of the beautiful days. So this is, I would say, 5% of your time there, you will get this kind of uh, weather. It's not always this beautiful. Yeah, so we uh, chose Sydney Island as part of a transect sampling across a latitudinal gradient. So Sydney Island is up here, and you have King George, Anvers, Rothera, Alexander Island, and Ellsworth land. So my initial plan was to actually go to Rothera as well. However, that did not uh, was not, I did not end up getting a bed. So when you apply, as Dr. Lutfi has shared, you actually have to inform where you want to go. And this all goes into your pre-OPSQ as well as confirmation in your post, sorry, OSPQ, your post-OSPQ as well. Uh, exactly where you need to go, um, how many beds you require, what's the equipment that you're going to carry. So I applied to both Sydney and Rothera, but in the end, uh, I didn't manage to actually uh, go to Rothera because there was not enough beds when I went 2019, 2020, they were uh, building the new port for the new ship. So I was on, I think, the second to last um, voyage of the James Clark Ross ship. So after that, it was doing one more trip and then it was going to be phased out. And now I think they have the Sir David Attenborough, which is a much bigger ship, much more sophisticated. So what did we have to do traveling south? So uh, Dr. Lutfi has shared extensively on the whole process, so I'm not going to go through the timeline. However, in the OSPQ, there were four main uh, forms that I recall. So this, again, was in 2019. I'm not certain if things have changed uh, since then, but I remember that we had to fill in a general OSPQ, the field support OSPQ. So in there, you actually have to detail whether you need who do you need to uh with you? Do you need anyone to assist you with the work? You know, especially if you're going to be doing um sampling at remote locations. So that would be deep field. So Alexander uh, Island and uh, Lagoon Island, they're all considered um boating as well. You do require boating uh a boat. So this all has to be planned in advance so that they are able to inform you um and plan for the resources, including the um, the skilled staff to assist you through all of this because you are considered as us with best visitors um, going down to their research station. And yes, we there was a very, very extensive uh, BASMU form. So that's the BAS medical unit. Um, at the time, there were eight forms including your medical dental clearance, all the vaccinations you had to take. Uh, I remember sitting with my doctor, it was about an hour and a half of just me <laughs> taking up the, the doctor's time to fill in the whole list because it included talk, 
top to bottom, uh, GI, respiratory, cardiac issues, uh, skeletal issues, any MRIs or scans that you have recently with any uh, issues or conditions, all has to be declared. Um, I think the most, the one that you really do not want to have an issue with, especially down south, is dental. You do not want to have dental problems, uh, especially when I went to Sydney. Sydney is very remote. Uh, the nearest um, doctor or any facility is three days by ship, unless you're lucky enough that there is a vessel uh, nearby that has a doctor on board. Okay, so that, that actually comes also to your planning um, before you're going south. You have to actually fill in things like your next of kin forms, including, uh, you know, it sounds quite morbid, like just uh, Dr. Lutri mentioned, you have to tell your family, that you will be away. So I was away quite long. Um, it All of this fieldwork planning has element of flexibility. You have to be able to be flexible and adapt because the plans keep changing and it all also depends on the weather, on the resources and so on. So um, before all that, maybe I'll detail a bit more later, I'll go through this these points first. Um, I went for the pre-deployment training at Best Cambridge. Uh, I think Dr. Lutfi did his partially online in Malaysia, but mine was also pre-COVID. So um, we, we planned actually, and the only budget I required from my end was the flights. So, and, and the transport to get to Cambridge. Um, I was lucky because I have family there. So, you know, I had, uh, my aunt actually drove me to Cambridge. So that was, that was for me lah. If not for your project, you actually have to plan how you're going to take the train. If you're going to fly into London, take the train to Cambridge, how you're going to reach Cambridge itself, because from the train station, you still need to take a, a cab um, to Cambridge, to the best uh, location. And uh, in the pre-deployment training, Part of the pre-deployment training is actually your kitting out. So they actually fit you um, with the required clothing. For Sydney, because it's a warmer environment, we didn't have as many layers required as uh, Rodera. Um, for me, actually, so they will give thermal. So that's your first layer. And that's the one we actually will wash most frequently. They even give the socks, the shoes. So two types of shoes were given to me. The hiking boots and the work boots. So the work boots is with the composite toes. You know, uh, that is for construction, actually, because you actually help them out sometimes on base, at least for, uh, for Sydney, because there are only seven of us there. Compared to Rothera, you have all the facilities. Sydney, it is just us, the team. And we all double up as the cleaners, the cooks, uh, assistants. We assist with uh, carpentry. We assist with preparation, uh, moving the zinc as they were building a new uh, housing for um, some of the equipment. So we also have to have work gloves. This was kind of some of the things that we needed. So I didn't need this final... This is more for deep field. So um, the, the clothing I required for Sydney was up to the orange, uh, the fourth one. Um, the boots as well, all will have to be fitted. So actually, even before I went to Cambridge, I had to fill in a form with all my measurements, uh, head size, uh, waist, shoulder, arm length, everything. And if you need prescription sunglasses, that's something they also uh, you can order, you can order for, actually. Um, but yeah, so sunglasses are really important down south as well because of the glare from the snow and as well as the UV uh, radiation. That's uh, one of the most important things. What I personally found was that um, I had spare thermals, uh, a third set. They only gave me two sets of thermals. Um, and if you are going to be working on field uh, almost every day, which I did, that then two sets is actually not enough. So I, I was uh, advised to bring another set. So I actually had my own set of thermals, which I think you can, you know, nowadays you can buy from places like Uniqlo and so on. Yeah, so the pre-deployment training, um, I will describe a bit more as well in the next slide. So uh, as mentioned, you will need to fill in things like risk assessments, chemical approvals register if you are bringing down chemicals, if you're going to be working with any chemicals as part of your research including a PEA as your environmental impact assessment. Of course, they are very sensitive and they're very careful with how you are actually collecting soil, how you're going to be your, your 
your, your traveling, uh, the type of travel that you're going to be doing uh, in Antarctica as well, whether you're going to end up contaminating to minimize as much as possible. And we all have to have a specialist activity permit for all our activities in Antarctica as well. And yeah, so the fieldwork planning, the personnel, research cargo, so what are you going to bring down? So I had to bring down all my lab materials because Sydney, unlike Rothera, you have to assume there's nothing nothing there, including my 70, my uh, ethanol for decontamination. So um, when we, because I was bringing all this down myself in on the commercial flight, I actually had to get letters from Bess and from my uh, IMU as well, uh, exactly what I'm bringing down. So it was all planning. I knew I needed this amount of soil. So I must have at least 400 tubes of my conical centrifuge, centrifuge tubes. And I knew that I was going to do some preliminary soil work there in the lab. So I need the beakers. I had to bring gloves. Lah. So unlike Rothera, we didn't have the ethanol, the gloves, even like wash bottles I just brought just in case. Weighing trays, even the little weighing machine for my gravimetric uh, 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 testing of the moisture content, um, the pH meter, the, even the solutions to calibrate the pH meter and conductivity and all that. And this was what my box looked like because uh, they will book, so best will book your flight uh, depending on the route you're taking. So for your travel south uh, from the point of UK, they will, they will cover. But for me, I had to get to the UK. So that was on my own grants expenses. And also, so I had to check how much weight they allow for me. And I should tell them I need an additional 23 kg to carry this box. And again, I also have to make sure the box is in the right uh, dimensions and all that. And because I was carrying uh, ethanol, I had to bring all the MSDS safety data sheets with me printed uh, in, in the file. And I had to aliquot out the ethanol into smaller bottles. So I can't be carrying, I don't need a one liter bottle of ethanol or or absolute ethanol, I had to make it up and label it carefully, even with the chemical name and all that. And then I can bring it all down with me. The pre-deployment training course, so I actually did see the 2024 course is quite similar. Um, they will go through and share all the, um, the stations that are available. You get to actually meet people who are going south in the season. So it's actually a very good opportunity to get to know your potential uh, shipmates, uh, maybe you may actually meet some people, some of the scientists and um, colleagues who will be on the islands with you. Uh, and they gave all the materials as well. So mine was 6 to 8 October. And that's where I was kitted out. So that's me on Sydney Island. In This is, I think, the most full gear that I had. And this is actually what it looks like in the uh, storage. All the kit bags. So Bass likes orange. I don't know why. Uh, I guess it's easy to spot us in the snow. Um, so this is me, including with the ice axe, crampons, and the uh, walking stick. So the ice axe, crampons, and walking stick were all on base. The ones that were provided, even, oh, sorry, even the backpack um, was from base. It was not from Cambridge. When I say base, I mean on Sydney Island itself. Um, they gave the hat and the shoes and the clothes, but all these other things um, were from the Sydney's own um, stock of the uh, equipment. Um, as part of that training, um, and sorry, the kitting out as well. So some of the locals, local Brits, they actually will take that kit bag with away with them. That bag of the clothes was is about 18 kilograms. And some people like, if I wanted to bring it back with me, it's not practical. So I actually applied to get them to put it on the ship for me. And, uh, and I'll pick it up when I actually bought the ship later on. Uh, I had to do the PST training in, in East Coast College. Uh, so it's a bit different from Dr. Lutfi's experience. So I did it here. Uh, this is an image from their website. So it's sea survival training. So you actually have to learn, jump from the platform. They'll put you through wind, rain, how you're going to flip the boat. If you actually have to evacuate, uh, what do you need to do? So it was quite a grueling training as well. So you have to bring your swimming suit and so on. First aid training. So you are trained on the basic life support. A very simple uh, uh, training for us as, as um, visitors, actually. 
Um, part of part of the pre-deployment training also is meeting our station leader. So I got to meet Matt Jobson, uh, the station leader at the time, and he could share all the things and the rules of the island with me in advance. Yeah, so this for this course, everything was provided. So I just needed to get there. So that's the part that has to we have to look for our own uh, source of funding, la, or if it's part of your institution's uh, uh, research fund. So there are many routes to go to go down south. So in my case, I went through Cambridge, uh, sorry, to through London, through uh, South America. So we flew commercial through, uh, um, I think down south, it was Madrid, Madrid to Chile, Santiago, and then from Santiago, a domestic flight to Punta Arenas. So my ship left from Punta Arenas and not the Falklands. So I didn't need any visa or anything like that. So we actually have to take note in terms of your vaccinations as well, uh, whether you need certain vaccinations for locations you're going to, like yellow fever or, or any anything, because we'll be transiting there. But anyway, um, for my journey, it was the, the standard. Um, I think it was like meningitis, influenza. Now, obviously, there's COVID. At the time, it was meningitis, influenza. Um, I think there was hepatitis, if you don't have it as well. And... I think there was one more. Um, I think it was just that. It was just that. Yeah. So all that, if they take in advance, and then you go down south, and I was on Sydney Island. When you leave, it's, Sydney is the first one. So three days ship, and you're on Sydney already. So that was my journey together with the, uh, the group I was with there. Yeah, and that's the view from the ship. And this was the first, uh, they call it, uh, recon going down to see and dig out Sydney from the snow. So Sydney is a summer only research station. So it will be snowed over in five, six feet of snow that they had to dig out. So usually the, the men and those who have been to Sydney before will go down first. So I had to wait uh, a day actually before I could come down to Sydney. So this is what it looks like on the first day we came down. The ship can't come straight to the station, so you have to send what we call a cargo tender. And we all came down to help set things up on the island. And this was the group just before the ship left. Um, yeah, and some photos of the island as well. So you can actually see my gear. Um, you have to be, if you're not fit, you have to get, you will get fit as you go there because you have to carry, this was almost 20 kg. Uh, my backpack because it included my equipment, GPS, all my tubes, gloves, uh, the sticks, your uh, mandatory things you have to carry as part of your safety. So even when I was on the island, the uh, field guide is the main person who will train as well as he's the only medically, he's the highest medically trained person available there. He's not a doctor, but he has uh, all the advanced um, uh, first aid. But that's all we have. Um, so you will get fit there, uh, especially I was there for quite a while. So that was a leopard seal that decided to visit us uh, before it disappeared. So this is what the kit bag also looks like, the two types of shoes and the gloves as well. So you also have to adapt uh, as we go along. And this is what we call like your, uh, your what do you call it? The tag board. So actually, before we actually leave this base, and because we can actually explore on our own, we have to tag out, write our name. So you can see my name, Alia, is there. And what time I'm out, where I'm going, and what time I'm expected back. And I have to radio and let them know that um, uh, I've actually reached my location. So before I leave, I actually turn on my radio, tell them, Sydney, Sydney, Alia, I'm departing for Gurley. Uh, then someone, whoever's there, will pick up the radio and say, um, Alia Alia Signi, uh, noted, have a good have a good journey, and then we'll go. And when I get the girlie, I have to do the same thing. So this is how we ensure that we know where we are. So it's only a five by six kilometer island, but it is uh, the weather there is very unpredictable. Uh, you can actually uh, you know get very gravely injured, especially even leaving base uh, along tra uh, traversing the side of the of the um the pathway to go up. To the rest of the island. So this is what the island looks like. So grey are my tracks actually. And what I originally planned um, were Burnson Point, Gurley Peninsula, 
the Shamsa Point, Skewer Terrace, Jensen Ridge. Okay, and uh, so you have the allowance. Let's say if you go there, you find interesting places to do your work. As long as your maximum amount applies. So my maximum for soil was 12 kilograms. So as long as I'm within 12 kilograms, um, I can actually collect samples. So I did collect some samples from Limestone Valley that was not in my original OSPQ, but there is flexibility there, as well as Cummings Cove and North Point on top. So in the end, I had eight sites, uh, which is great because I had a more uh, extensive coverage of uh, soils around the island. So it's the same thing. So there were some points in Rothera I wanted soil samples from, but it was not possible due to logistics. Yes, so this is what it looks like. So that's me collecting the samples. Gurley has the most abundant number of penguins on the island as well. Uh, as you can see here, the, the ground is just covered in, in their poop. It's pink because they eat krill, and krill is pink in color. So it smells like a fish market. And you actually see their chicks come in. Uh, uh, the, the, the parents come in, have the egg, they hatch. And the chicks are very cute and fluffy until the parents actually leave. Um, and they call crashing. And the uh, babies are then... Uh, she, becoming adults, they've shedded, they've shed their fur. And part of the zoologist that was on the island with me, he needed to weigh them. So all of us had to help him to catch about 100 of these chicks to weigh them. And it's part of their research on the, the health of, of the penguins and whether they're getting enough krill or not. Uh, this is something what, uh, this is what one of my sites look like. This is uh, where, with Skewer Terrace, this is on Skewer Terrace. I have to record the GPS. So we also carry a GPS with us. As you can see, it's quite uh, foggy. So if we actually can't identify exactly, especially on the ice cap, we actually have to use the GPS. And this was my sampling plan, which I discussed in advance with the uh, BAS uh, experts. Okay, What is the best way to sample? How many should I sample? So it was two tubes per location, five points. And I have to return to the same place. So what my field guide, you know, if they discuss all of this with the field guide as well, because he has to plan. Um, as I mentioned here, uh, the base is on the east coast of the island. So I have sites on the west coast and that requires advanced planning to cross uh, the, the uh, tour across Limetown Valley to go up is easier. It's about three hours on foot, three hours, yeah, about three hours on foot. And that's much faster, but you have to cross the, um, uh, the water on the rocks. So that has to be low tide. So there's timing there as well. Um, worst case, I actually have to go up across the ice cap and then come down, which is a much longer journey and uh, much more difficult, especially to carry the samples back. So that's all planning as well. And it's also being flexible. Yeah, so this is what it looks like. And then noting what were the... Um, vegetation that was available. There was a lot more soil for me to collect compared to uh, what you find in Rothera. Yeah, and there's a, the, they have a very abundant uh, ecosystem here because of all the wildlife. So you also, yes, have the skewers, the birds and the giant petrels, they call it, that are around. I was fortunate enough to not be attacked by them. Uh, however, we do get a lot of seals, fur seals come in in uh, December. Uh, tens of thousands of them on this small island. So there will be a point when you walk out of base that you might step on one, which you don't want to step on. You step on them, then they'll bite you. Um, mostly on Sydney, they are the males that did not manage to mate. So there are no babies, no baby seals. They're all the male fur seals that come to uh, Sydney. On the west coast, so if I need to sample along the whole stretch, I will need to at least stay overnight because it will be too late for us to travel back. So we have to stay at Fuka Hut. So there's also some training that I will have to go uh, undergo with the field guide. So Martin was my field guide. I, he had to train me on the light, lighting, how to light the fuel, how to light the lamp, uh, some other safety aspects. And we also have to bring our own food there. Um, yeah, so this is what the hut looks like. And um, they actually built a little terrace so we can actually have a nice view. 
the lab work I did. So the Sydney lab is, is, a, is a nice, decent lab, just that we had to literally bring everything. So there were some racks and things, but all these materials were things I actually brought. And this is some of the pH measurements I was taking in the lab. And also because there are only seven of us that on, uh, on, on base at that time, we have to help out with station duties. You do get some seals getting lost, even though we have a seal fence. Not sure how this little fella got in. You have your elephant seals. So, you know, they are very smelly, as you can see here. And this is right outside the window. And they're also very noisy. So my station master also liked my painting work. So I was tasked with a lot of painting jobs, uh, painting the hut. So this was like my progress um, over the three months I was there, um, painting some of the huts with the wood stain. And this was us in our gear, catching the penguins for uh, the zoologist work. So on the left is Darren, um, who has been in Sydney over a decade, almost every year for a decade. The food, so we have, fresh food that comes with the ship, but that's it. The ship only drops off once and leaves. And that's, we have to cook, cook it ourselves on rotation as well. So this is what our uh, living area looks like. It's very pleasant. We also have to bake our own bread every morning. There's morning and evening duty on rotation as well. If you're on morning duty, you have to bake bread. Whether you know how to do it or not, just follow the recipe um, and then just do it. And then, uh, yeah, you have no choice whether it turns out well or not you will get better over time. Uh, what's happening now? I think I won't, I think it's already 11.15. So I won't go into this too much because this is just what we, what uh, analysis we're currently finishing up. So all the soil chemical analysis, including um, heavy metals, nitrate nitrite, phosphate content, and then the soil samples collected uh, analysis that we're doing. And in the end, the soil bacterial functions as well using NMR. Yeah. So these were the gentlemen I was on base with. I call them like my dads because many of them were much, much older. So they, they took really good care of me and were very considerate. Um, as me, I was only lady as well. So I was fortunate because then I got my own room as well. I didn't have to share with anyone. So that actually made my stay more comfortable because the rooms are very, very small. They're really small with a bunk bed, two uh, cupboards. It's literally just one, you have a literally just less than a meter walk in between the wall and the um the bunk beds. So yeah, that's it. So I think they were all very pleasant. We had some other scientists there as well, uh, from other uh institutions. So this was this is the Kyber Pass where I actually stopped to rest and radio in. And um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy the photos as well. And that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Dr. Alia and Dr. Luffy for the valuable um, information shared today. We hope all participants have uh, some ideas on the birth support to bus and those interested can prepare for the upcoming cycle. Uh, we hope to see more Malaysians to be involved in the Atlantic research and YPSM, YPSM is organizing a series of webinar on experience sharing by Malaysian researchers. Let me share the poster. Okay. Now we are in the second webinar. Now we are on the second one. And we are going to have another webinar this Wednesday and then another three session next week. And uh, okay. So this is 2025 call for proposal timeline. We are now in October and then we will have another workshop in September. This is more on the guide to write a good proposal and then a briefing and guideline uh briefing and guidelines uh introduction on the 2035 guidelines in October. For your information we will start to use um a system for 
uh, fund application this year. So normally we will just, you just need to fill up the form and then email to us, right? So starting 2025 cycle, uh, we will use a system. So all application will be made online. So we will have a briefing uh, to introduce um, you to the system. Okay, and then 1st November is the official announcement of the call. And then December is physical workshop. This is subject to the universities yang interested to invite us to go to your uh, institution. Uh, we will bring in some panels uh, or expert to give some input to improve your proposal before you submit. Uh, the deadline will be 31st January. So February, April is the review, reviewing process. And then May is the final assessment by our scientific advisory committee. And then June is uh, approval and endorsement by our board of trustees. And July will be the announcement of the recipient. So any questions um, from the audience today for Dr. Alia and Dr. Lutfi? I saw one question from Dr. Rauhan. Does birth support means it's easier for us to do whatever we want to do without rely too much on other researchers' project and will be will the staff from the station to accompany or help us at the station? Uh, special treatment from the host, Doctor Lutfi. Okay, um, thank you for the for the question. Um, so basically, when we go there, um, you can do whatever that you want for your project, but. In order for you to go, for example, for um, uh, from the station to other islands, you need to take the boat, right? So, uh, uh, usually in Rotra, we have meetings every day at uh, eight in the morning. So when you go eight in the morning, they will say, okay, today is okay to take the boat. So, um, you have to be ready any time, any day. So when you go to the, uh, for example, for me to go to uh, Lagoon or, or uh, any other island, Leone, Lagoon, Anchorage, for example, I need to have another person accompany, like the field master to accompany me to do uh, sampling. Meaning that they, they just go there just in case to accompany you. But I mean, you can, I mean, if, they are your friend, you can, uh, they will help you collect the sample. But basically, they just do their, uh, uh, do their own stuff or eating, uh, sip coffee or, or you know, do knitting, <laughs> something like that, like that while waiting for you. I mean, like my, my case, I'm just taking soy sample. So it's not that bad. But for other people, they need, um, uh, like Dr. Alia mentioned, you need help to catch the bird and so on. So people who work with squaw bird, for example, they need pe person to to catch the bird. So they will bring a lot of guys, you know, bring them and help uh, to catch the bird, uh, you know, to, to measure the wings or whatever it is. Because uh, when we go there, usually we want to catch with the time because... Uh, you don't know when the weather is okay or not because suddenly it's it it flips like you know you see like all the sunshine and, and you say yeah let's go but when you go back there's a you know iceberg uh, not iceberg like like um uh there are a lot of ice on the uh, on the water because of you know some iceberg broke off you know <laughs> immediately and so on so you never know what uh i mean those things so you always have to have radio with you and so on so uh i'm not sure about special treatment but basically basically they will uh let you to do your own research by yourself uh and you just need to bring other people okay. maybe dr alia wants to add on that yeah so 
in birth support is the coverage for your time there, basically, your lodging, your food, and whatever transportation you applied for. Um, I would say no special treatment. Lah. When you first get there, you actually you know, have to tell them what you need to do. So for my case, it was just the field guide I was going to be working with. So I had to tell him my whole plan, what I want to sample, how many times, where I want to go. So he has a map and he marked where uh, I need to go. So some I can actually travel myself nearby. Whereas those across the island must be compulsory two-person travel, he must go with me. So that has to be planned his time because he's also assisting another uh, scientist as well with the, who was doing uh, more on fluid, fluid glacier water flow or something like that, geomorphology or something. Yeah, but so that is what they will provide for you with your birth support. It's um it, it, there's no reliance on other research project, other person's research project also. Yeah. Um, it's your own work and your own supply. Uh if you're like yeah, like Dr. Lutfi also said, if they need assistance, it will be told in advance and you know it will be it won't interfere. So everything everyone has to sit down together and we have meetings every Monday morning um to share what we did and what we are planning to do this week and to coordinate lah, uh, where the, the one field guide, who, where he needs to go, when as well. Mm. And if we're going to be off base, we have to inform them uh, where we're going and so on, how long we're planning to be away, what rations we need to bring, um, and what materials we need to plan for. But yeah, I think that's, that's, that's all. Mm. Any other questions? Any more questions? You can just go unmute and ask directly to the speakers. Um, I would like to add uh, that um, I urge uh, all researchers here to apply to go to Antarctica. It's a very, very nice experience. You will uh, meet a lot of people um, and you will gain a lot of knowledge you gain a lot of experience and I, you know, I just apply this during COVID where, you know, not a lot of people wants to go out, but I just try anyway and Alhamdulillah, I got it. Um, and uh, it's really opened up uh, my, uh, you know, my experience on a lot of things. And, um, you know, uh, even though a lot of things have to be done uh, compared to if you apply for other station uh, from other countries, especially for bus. But they are pretty much really uh, systematic, uh, I would say, you know, with all the forms and so on. So it's not that uh, you will be lost somewhere, you know, uh, even though you have one or two that you kind of like uh, lost of information, but uh, everything went smoothly for me. Uh, I'm not sure about other countries, but uh, for me, it's like, you know, you know exactly what to do based on the list that being given to you by the uh, bus because they've been working on Antarctic research for, you know, 1980s or 1970s. So they know all the things that, you know, people need to do or what to do and so on. So, um, yeah, I mean, I urge you guys to apply for uh bus uh, birth support here thank you thank you dr lupi dr talia you want to say anything i guess before, that, uh, uh, before no we questions end. oh okay well um just the last say is to really be prepared to be flexible i think you cannot be rigid you cannot afford to be rigid uh, in this kind of research, especially when you're doing field work. So I wasn't supposed to be there that long either. What happened was I was supposed to go the same route as Dr. Lutfi from Bryce Norton, Oxford, take the 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 and the military um plane to Falklands and take the Navy vessel actually. The tapi, the Navy vessel was had some damage. It had to go up to go up north for fixing. I had to take the JCR one month earlier. <laughs> So I was supposed to go in December. So I ended up going in November. So you have to be prepared. So it was a huge scramble for me because one month, that time when I found out it was around September, 
October. So it was a huge scramble for me to prepare, get all my things in order to travel there. And also when you book your flights and everything. So my flight back to KL on my return also wasn't booked yet because I don't know when I will land back in the UK, when I will end up flying back to Malaysia. Um, the ship also was delayed almost two weeks to pick me up. That's why my time there got even longer. Uh, but it was good because then I did more uh, rounds of sampling and it was within my weight limit. I could take 12 kg of soil. So because I was there longer, I could do another two week round of sampling for my site. So that's how you adapt, um, make the most of your time there. Yeah, but I think that, that that's it. Lah. Uh, I think the most important thing is that kind of adaptability and flexibility when it comes to this work. But yeah, anyway, thank you everyone for listening. Um, um, I want to add about the internet, okay? Uh, in my stay in uh, Rotorat, we have internet, but it's very slow. Um, I mean, you can open Facebook, but uh, you cannot like watch videos or anything like that because it depends on how many person in the station. Uh, during summer, it was like 120 person. So a lot of people, so it's very slow. But if you go during winter, it will be very fast. You can, uh, you know, watch movies and so on. Nonetheless, they have their own drive. Uh, that that there are a lot of movies, <laughs> a lot of movies, a lot of things over there. You can watch. Um, and basically at night, you know, before I went uh to sleep, I I just like watch one movie or something like that, you know. Uh, and and. I mean, you can copy that into your laptop anyway, so you can bring back. <laughs> uh, but uh, internet is not the first priority. I mean, like, just in case if you need a lot of, I mean, uh, do a lot of online banking or whatever, please do that before you go to Rothra or you go to this station. So you need to set up automatically like all the payment, you know, bank, uh, you know, for your houses or car or whatever. So all those things need to be automated. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Alia and Dr. Wan Lutfi. Um, I have left um, both emails in the chat box. You can contact them directly after after this thank you thank you for joining us today thank you thank you thank you